Hello and welcome to my part for patrons this week. And I thought what I would do is I would talk a little bit about Paul's time at Ephesus on his third missionary journey uh, and collect, I've, I've made a lot of comments uh, in the videos on Acts 19 and such uh, and elsewhere, but I thought I would just kind of collect some, some of my thinking on Paul's time at Ephesus. And we are, we are really hampered here by a lack of information. So we have uh, a sliver of information from the book of Acts in Acts 19. And of course, we have the letters that Paul wrote, and um, we don't exactly know the situations of all of them. There are traditions, of course. So the prison epistles, which are Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, the tradition is that these are, were written from Rome. But of course, these are traditions. Um, and um, I personally believe that a lot of the traditions about authorship and, and such were, were made by guests, the same kind of guesswork that we do uh, today, um, that uh, some of the traditions probably had a kernel of origin in history, but, but then you people, you know, people think and they speculate and um, traditions kind of coalesce. We know a little bit about how these traditions develop and work. Uh, for example, uh, I studied in England, um, and uh, I studied at a place called Durham, and but not a lot of people know about Durham, and so uh, it's quite common for people to think that I did my doctorate at Oxford or Cambridge. There's nothing wrong with Durham. Durham's a great school, <laughs> uh, better than those at that time, I would say. Durham was great, um, but... Um, uh, people will gravitate toward uh, thinking I'm from Oxford or Cambridge. And if people like you, then uh, they, they tend to, to develop things bigger than they are. Uh, I have a colleague here who repeatedly introduces me as being a member of Mensa. I'm not a member of Mensa. Um, I don't know how, how he got that in his head. Um, but so, so we know how traditions work and we know how they, how they develop. And, and so the traditions about uh, the New Testament uh, are later, and they probably came from some kernel of truth, uh, but but things develop, and so we we really don't know all of the all of the uh, uh, the details. We we don't have enough information, and of course, if you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as as I've said repeatedly, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have some tensions between each other. Did Jesus uh, throw the money changers out of the temple in the first year of his ministry, John two? Or did he do it in the last week of his ministry, or both? Um, these sorts of questions arise from the fact that we have multiple accounts. If all we had were John, we would think, well, obviously he just threw money changers out in the first year of his ministry. He didn't do that in the last year of his ministry. Um, if we had Matthew, Mark, and Luke only, uh, and not John, we wouldn't we wouldn't know about the preexistence of Jesus. There, so um, we we have to assume that the Book of Acts, being as it were Luke Volume Two. Uh, that we would have different impressions of things if we had a Matthew 2, a Mark 2, uh, a John 2, and such. Now, of course, the problem is, is that when you begin to speculate about what those other traditions might have been without actually having a John 2, uh, you get yourself into trouble. Uh, so uh, here is to a, a video um, of both certainties and uh, wild speculation. Actually, I don't know that it's wild, but um, some some thoughts I've had that have wandered through my mind over the years. So what are the certainties? Now, when I say certainties, I'm not really meaning certainties, because again, this is just what seems to be, um, we have no basis to contest any of this. Um, so Paul first visited Ephesus around AD 52, 53. Uh, he left Corinth around 52, let's say, and he went to Ephesus. Acts says that. I have absolutely no reason to doubt. Uh, what Acts tells us here. Um, and so Paul visited Ephesus first around AD 52 or 53. Now, uh, the book of Acts tells us that Paul did not stay long. The impression we get from Acts is that Paul is uh, quite keen to get to Jerusalem, uh, to uh, probably to a festival, uh, because he's taken a vow. And so the impression we get uh, from the book of Acts is that Paul did not stay very long uh, when he first went to Ephesus. Now, he revisits then, comes back to Ephesus around 53, 54, and he stays maybe less than three years, but let's say about three years um, at Ephesus when he comes back. This is the longest 
uh, Acts really tells us about him doing mission work anywhere, although as, as we've also said, he, he's in Tarsus for a lot longer than this, um, uh, from about 36 to 44, 43. So, um, you know, he spends maybe six or seven years in the region of Tarsus. I personally speculate that he didn't stay in Tarsus that whole time, that he probably went up to Bithynia, I mean, to Cappadocia, and who knows, maybe to Bithynia, that, that he was out and about during those years. So he revisits um, Ephesus around 33, 34. We don't know how long that trip takes. Let's give it a year. Um, and then he finally gets back to Ephesus sometime later. Now, we are pretty certain, everybody pretty much agrees, that while Paul was at Ephesus during this particular stint of time that he wrote 1 Corinthians, um, that seems to be pretty clear. I have a verse on the next slide uh, where Paul mentions, if I fought wild beasts at Ephesus, and there's no resurrection, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. So Paul apparently is at Ephesus when he writes 1 Corinthians. Um, so that seems clear. Now, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul says, this is now the third time that I'm coming to visit you. Uh, we only know of uh, two visits in the book of Acts. And so that he must have made an emergency trip. Maybe it wasn't an emergency trip, but he must have made some sort of a trip uh, in between those trips that Acts doesn't mention. A reminder, again, that Acts simply doesn't tell us everything that happened. It can't. can't they didn't make scrolls that long. Okay, um, we know uh, from 2 Corinthians that he also sent a harsh letter. So the sequencing, as I understand it, is Paul writes 1 Corinthians. Uh, it doesn't help enough. He makes a trip, um, and then um, that doesn't seem to work entirely either. He sends a letter. Uh, it's a very harsh letter. He's not sure whether he should have sent that letter. But then Titus returns. Um, Titus returns while Paul's in Macedonia. After after Paul leaves Corinth, he heads north to Troas and then to Macedonia. And while he's up there, he receives news back from Titus that everything's okay. Um, and that's when he writes Second Corinthians for Macedonia. There are questions about whether. The last few chapters of 2 Corinthians could be um, slightly later than the early part of 2 Corinthians. The idea here would be that perhaps Paul got uh, information that things weren't quite as... Uh, maybe he sent the two brothers down about the, about the offering in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, and they find out that actually the church isn't as much behind him as he thought. And then he writes uh, 2 Corinthians 10 through 13 as kind of his last surviving bit to the Corinthians. Well, it's his last surviving bit to the Corinthians, no matter what you think about the, uh, what, when we say the integrity of 2 Corinthians, we mean whether or not it was all written together, or whether it was written, at di whether we have um, different letters that have been uh, put together. Now, of course, we also know uh, from Acts 19, which is what we've been reading this week, that Paul came into serious conflict uh, with uh, the silversmith group uh, while he was um, at the end of his time there in Ephesus, about AD 57 uh, or perhaps uh, 58. Okay, so these, uh, now when I say certainties, I'm saying these are things that would be widely accepted uh, by pretty much everyone, uh, where we've taken uh, data that seems clear from Acts or from Paul's other letters, and we've, well, we've, put, it, we've put it together in a way that, that makes very much sense and that very few would disagree with. There is, of course, disagreement with some of these things. For, so, for example, um, I responded to a paper a couple weeks ago. The paper argued that Paul uh, leaves Corinth on this second trip, basically, ah, you guys aren't listening, I'm leaving now. Um, I don't know that that's clear to me. Um, it's not clear to me that Paul uh, left Corinth feeling like a failure. Um, although the person who was presenting presented that as a consensus. Um, to me, uh, Paul could have uh, heard later information that provoked the harsh letter um, that, um, that could have led to uh, the escalation. I, I'm not, I don't know whether the escalation happened and he left in a huff from Corinth or not, although I guess that is the majority opinion uh, right now. Okay, so what are possibilities? If these are relatives, and again, not certainties, but but things that would be commonly agreed by those who've, who've combed over uh, this, this data. What are some possibilities? Well, possibility one, 
Um, this is an intriguing comment in 1 Corinthians 15. What do I gain? Paul's talking about resurrection. And he says, what do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought wild beasts at Ephesus? If the dead are not raised, let's be Epicureans. Eat, drink, be merry. Tomorrow we die. Hey, party hardy. Um, so this is written from Ephesus, as we said. Um, and it's written probably, oh, 54, somewhere in there. So what is this fighting wild beasts at Ephesus? Well, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's literal, written about 54. I don't think it's literal because if it were literal, I think Paul wouldn't be writing this letter. He'd be dead. Um, so it's a, I think everybody would agree that it's metaphorical. Um, but, but what is he referring to? Who are the wild beasts? Well, it may hint at Paul having a jailing, uh, that Paul may have been jailed uh, uh, and gotten, gotten into trouble with the Roman authorities, basically, um, at some point uh, before he wrote 1 Corinthians. Um, now, again, if this is the case, uh, this is rather early in his stay uh, at Ephesus. And so I have wondered, you know how, um, that, how he goes back in the certainties, he did not stay long. He visits Ephesus, he doesn't stay long. I've wondered if Paul got into trouble uh, when he went first, you know, he first gets to, uh, so it's at the end of, uh, end of chapter 18 of Acts. Paul gets to Ephesus, um, he doesn't stay long, he leaves town, Priscilla and Aquila stay. You know, I've wondered if he was, if he got into trouble almost immediately when he first came um, to, uh, to Ephesus, and that this, this was part of why he left so soon. Yes, he had taken a vow. Acts doesn't tell us about this, but then again, Acts wants us to see Christians as not being troublemakers, and they're not. You know, again, I don't agree with, with what Luke is getting at here, um, but is it possible, you know, when you're, when you're filling out a job a res resume, you know, you don't put, if they don't ask you in the interview about some of your weaknesses, why would you tell them? And so why would Luke tell about things that that made Christians look bad. Christians aren't bad. And so it's not, it's not untruthful not to tell things that aren't true, even if uh, various historical events could be interpreted that way. So is it possible that Paul was jailed briefly when he first gets to, uh, and by, again, jailing is not a punishment. Jailing is you, you get in trouble, they put you in jail, and then you appear before uh, the magistrate. Um, is it possible that Paul underwent something like that? And if so, could he have written any of these during that imprisonment? So as we read in Acts chapter 19, Paul pretty much um, evangelizes the entire region of Asia while he's there. Um, it seems to me that surely Paul would have visited Colossae uh, during this uh, first, uh, while he was there at Ephesus. Surely he would have, maybe not. Uh, the, the traditional view has Paul writing Philemon and Colossians from Rome. Um, and, and of course, he says, prepare a guest room, which, which would suggest a change of direction, right? Because when Paul wrote, um, um, when Paul wrote Romans, he was headed west to Spain. And so if Paul wrote Philemon from Rome and is thinking of headed back east, he's had a change of plan. This will come into play with Philippians as well. Anyway, it's just a question. Um, of course, Colossians really, Colossians does not feel like it comes from this early in Paul's uh, missionary journey. Uh, Colossians says the gospel has been preached to every creature under heaven. That feels like something he would write from Rome, not like something he would write um, uh, from Philippi, I mean from Ephesus. So anyway, this is just um, musing. Uh, and speculation, uh, we will never know the answer to this question for sure. Uh, okay, possibility two. Uh, Galatians. I personally would, would speculate that Galatians was written while Paul was at Ephesus as well. Um, he says in Galatians 4.13, you know it was because of a bodily ailment that I preached the gospel to you the first time. The wording here, the first time, most naturally would suggest that he's already been there more than once. It suggests multiple visits to the region. This would preclude Galatians being the first letter that Paul wrote, um, and that Galatians was written before the Jerusalem Council. This would suggest that Galatians was written after uh, that, 
in fact, after his first missionary journey, at least on his second missionary journey. And uh, I had a professor once who thought that Paul had written Galatians from Corinth. I'm suggesting that Paul may have written Galatians from Ephesus. And I think N.T. Wright would agree with me on that, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, Galatians certainly seems more developed in its thinking than 1 Thessalonians. Um, and it does seem to me like a warm-up for Romans. Uh, I mentioned this week in Acts 19, Paul, uh, uh, he begins to teach in the hall of Tyrannus. And I wonder if uh, Galatians was produced uh, during that time was Paul, while Paul was at the hall of Tyrannus. Um, so perhaps Galatians, again, I'm not going to die for this, I hope, but perhaps Galatians was written about AD 54, around the same time as Paul was writing uh, 1 Corinthians. Okay, I can't prove it, not planning on dying for it, uh, but it's a possibility. Third possibility. So there's a riot at Ephesus. We read about it at the end of this week. Uh, so around AD 57 or 58, uh, there's this riot at Ephesus. Um, and of course, soon after Paul leaves Ephesus and he makes his way to Macedonia, he will write 2 Corinthians 1, which says that he felt like he had this sentence of death at Asia. Well, um, this seems a little bit more serious than the riot, right? Um, this, just this statement alone suggests that Paul's situation at Ephesus was a little bit more serious than even Acts uh, indicates it is. Um, which reminds me of something Paul says in Philippians. For me to live is Christ, uh, to die is gain. Um, now, um, you'll remember that at the end of the week, as we were reading Acts 19, uh, Paul says, or the, the clerk, the clerk of Ephesus says, look, there are courts here. If you have a problem with these people, take them to court. Well, I wonder if they did. I wonder if they did. I wonder if Paul was arrested. I wonder if Paul spent a little time in jail, uh, at, in, in a kind of second jailing at Ephesus at the end of his time there. Uh, I wonder if uh, it was very serious and that Paul wasn't clear if he was going to come out of this with his life. You'll notice that when Paul comes back around, we'll see this in Acts 20, I think it is, he doesn't go into Ephesus. He meets the leaders of Ephesus at Miletus. Now again, Acts says, Acts says he's trying to save time, um, and that may be true too. Uh, but um, could it also be that Paul simply does not want to step foot or has been legally forbidden? May, has he been exiled from the city? Uh, because um, First Clement suggests that Paul was jailed seven times and exiled once. So when was Paul exiled? Could it be that Paul was exiled uh, from the city of Ephesus? And so, uh, again, these are all question, question. Can you have too much time on your hand to think about these things? Uh, but I wonder if Demetrius, in fact, took Paul uh, to court. Uh, and that Paul wasn't entirely certain what the verdict would be uh, with the pro, the Roman uh, proconsul. Um, and so, um, uh, again, I think N.T. I, I, I'm very confident that N.T. Wright dates Philippians from Ephesus, and this is my uh, preference also, that when Paul writes, for me to live as Christ, to die as gain, uh, he's thinking of the fact that he's, he's jailed at Ephesus. Um, he says, uh, he, I hope to see you soon again, and when Paul, uh, when Paul went to Rome, he was not planning on going back east. He was planning on pushing west uh, to Spain. Uh, in fact, he says, there's no more room for me in the east to minister. And so it seems to me um, that, um, it, that Philippians fits much better Ephesus, where he does actually, we know from Acts that he leaves Ephesus and he goes to Philippi, um, that, that, that it fits better with an Ephesian imprisonment and jailing uh, than with a Roman. I'm not, again, I'm not going to die for it, hopefully, um, but um, it seems to me that Philippians fits uh, Ephesians better. The, the, the main pushback would be that he mentions the Praetorian Guard, but the Praetorian Guard would have been anywhere where the, the Roman administration was, right? So if you have a proconsul uh, in Ephesus, uh, then you're going to have a Praetorian Guard there. There's a Praetorian Guard in Caesarea Philippi, uh, as we'll see later on uh, in the book of Acts. And so I don't think that the mention of Caesar's household 
you know, we're not talking about brothers and sisters and sons and daughters here. We're talking about his administration, his household, his servants, his administrators, his pro councils. Those are all part of Caesar's household. So I don't think that those arguments against uh, a Ephesian uh, provenance for uh, Philippians actually um, have much force. So also the back and forth. So Epaphroditus, so Epaphroditus comes from Philippi to Paul, and then uh, he gets sick. News of him being sick travels back to Philippi. Um, ooh, Phil Epaphroditus is sick. They're, they're troubled. News gets back to Paul uh, that they're troubled about Epaphroditus. And then Paul writes Philippians. This back and forth, certainly it could take place at Rome. But if, it, if Paul was at, at Ephesus, then that back and forth would be perfectly comprehensible. Um, it's a lot more uh, travel uh, if, if Paul's at Rome. But of course, he's under house arrest for two years at Rome. Uh, so this is not, again, uh, necessarily something that couldn't, couldn't happen. But those are some arguments. So my three possibilities, could Philemon, well, could Paul have been in prison twice I act, or jailed twice? I think that's actually quite possible. Um, could Paul have written Philemon during his first jailing? Um, that one's a little bit sketchy, uh, but I've wondered it. Um, it's a little sketchy. It just seems to me, though, that Paul would have surely visited Colossae before he, uh, before he got to Rome. Uh, he spent all that time there. Um, uh, could Paul have written Galatians from Ephesus? I think this is quite plausible. Could Paul have written Philippians from Ephesus? I think, again, quite plausible. Um, and so three, possi three possibilities um, uh, and an extra jailing. Okay, so uh, was Philippians written from Ephesus? That was my third one. So what happens after Paul leaves Ephesus? Well, he writes 2 Corinthians from Macedonia. Uh, and then, of course, he goes on and writes Romans from Corinth around AD 57. So this is, a very, this is the centerpiece of Paul's ministry, right? Um, these three years, uh, uh, while Paul is around the area of Ephesus, uh, is when he, according to my, right, my thing, he writes his core letters. He writes Romans, 1 2 Corinthians, Galatians, uh, Philippians, uh, um, and maybe Philemon, you know, during that time. That's a, that, this is the, the heart of Paul's ministry, uh, I would say, there at Ephesus. Well, um, next week, Lord willing, we'll move on to Acts chapter 20.